morning and welcome back to Planner Craft. I'm Natalie and today we are comparing the Brother Foiling Kit with the We Are Memory Keepers Foil Quill. So if you have any questions at any point, pop them in the comments. Don't forget to say hi and let us know that you're watching. And if you need any assistance, Ian's going to be manning the comments so he can ask your questions for you. Tracy says hello. Hi Tracy. Hello my beautiful crafting family. <laughs> so I thought I would start first of all with a sort of overview of the foil kit. Now as you can tell this is brand new out of the box. Morning, so man. what do you get? We have a sheet of instructions which tell you what should be in your pack. Always a good idea to check in case anything's missing. How to activate your foiling function and there's also an activation card as well then when we turn over you've got all your instructions that you need for how to actually use it okay so it's in there in quite a few different languages so it's one of those ones where you just want to find the English one and keep that <laughs> you have also in your pack a collection of little goodies so let's start at the beginning we have a pen and tool holder for the foiling kit it is designed specifically for the glue pen and also these two little attachments here which are designed to rub the foil onto the sticky surface. We have the activation card. So Ian's going to show you how to activate it on screen. Yeah? Ish? Obviously you'll have to go a bit careful with numbers and things you're going to have a glue pen you're going to have a collection of foils to use so there's gold and silver in there you have a foil dust removal sheet which sounds interesting to say the least so that'll be interesting to see how that works and finally we have a foil protective sheet so this goes over the top of your foil so that when you use your little burnishing tool it's not going to be in direct contact with the foil it's going to hit this first and then that's going to apply pressure through to rub the foil onto the surface okay. a couple more good mornings go on then yeah, so we have morning Carol, morning Joyce, morning Linda, morning Maggie, morning Sandra. Okay. There we go. So on your machine, if you want to go to close view, what you first of all need to do is go into your settings. You're going to go down to the bottom, premium functions, and make sure that your kit activation for your foil is turned on. And if you go in there, you can access all the settings for your pressure, scale, and so on and so forth. Now, that is going to look slightly different on the CM. So, where you're going to access those settings is going to change. So, basically, when you choose between gluing and foiling, there's a little setting symbol on there, which is where you can access all of these functions. So, oh, excuse me. I will go OK. And OK again. And your mum's in. Hi mum. So, moving on to the foil quill. Yes please. This doesn't need any extra settings in canvas, but what you will need is a power bank. So this end attaches to your battery pack or to a USB power socket. And this end's going to get hot. Um, it comes with four different adapters for all the different machines so you want the one that says B on it for brother nice and easy to remember so you just screw that on to attach it now don't screw it too tightly and do what I did which is get that stuck on there because it's very difficult to get back off again and we're still trying it's only been stuck on there what about a year and a half now yeah. <laughs> and we can't get it off so don't don't over tighten Okay, so Ian has downloaded and 
transferred a design so I'm going to pull that across from the internet and there we go da, 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 da. and we have our little owl is it grouped? it is, yay cool Just to send us a power saw that might work <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, I want. I, I like my knees intact, thank you. <laughs> okay, so where should we start? Here? Shall we start with um, the activation card? If you want to. Okay. You need to tell me because I haven't even got cameras open anymore. Should it? Oh, okay. We can leave that towards the end then. We don't. Your activation card is only for the extra designs. I should have said that. You don't, technically need, it, do you, you don't technically need it. So I can always share that on another video. Yeah. And Louise says good morning. Good morning, Louise. So I need my normal mat. So this is where we're going to get it started. Let's move all these bits out of the way. Can I have my good mat in? That means not wanting to stay there. Carol is saying she has both and hasn't used the brother foil and kit. She thinks the wheel memory keeper's one is best and easy to use. It's certainly going to be quicker. Because essentially you're going to be drawing the same design twice with the brother one. Okay. With our mat, I'm going to start as I mean to go on, and let's grab my foil shield. Now, the reason I'm using my foil shield is although we have that protective sheet, it only protects the the tool from warping the foil. It doesn't protect the mat from the foil. These are managed to get themselves in the knot in. There we, go. there we go. So let's get this up the right way, always helps. And I'm going to pop that onto my mat. So for anybody who's interested, it's a new foil shield that we have now in production. Um, this is not good with gloves, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you doing this? You know why I'm trying to do yeah, with no, gloves. Do it with gloves. Yes, okay. um, and it's now available on a pre-order. Um, it's available on um, our new shop, which we've put up. So if you look back on the posts regarding A, the pre-order, or B, there's a new one that we've put up recently, um, showing the new one, and it should take you to a sum-up shop now, um, for the purchase, um, just because it's a little bit better for us. Um, you can buy from there. If you do go through to the sum-up shop, just make sure you select the right option, because um, it does come up with just the individuals first at the top of the listing. Um, and you'll need to scroll down to find the full sets or the starter sets, whichever ones you'd like. Okay. I think I need to speak up. I can't help it. So that was quite clear from. Yes, but the mic is over here. So trying to deal with, it with background noise and it makes it more difficult for you then, doesn't it, Ian? Yes. So. With that loaded onto the mat, I'm going to pop that into the machine. I know that wasn't you, Carol. It's <laughs> <laughs> Tracy, isn't it? Naughty Tracy. I'll tell her off later. <laughs> okay. So what I am going to do is just grab my jar. Just so I have something supporting my mat. So the reason you want to make sure your mat is supportive if you're working on the desk or up on a shelf like me is that it's going to actually be... Oh, still needs a bit more than that. 
Oh my god, I can just put that temporarily. There we go. Just because we don't want to have that map bending. So, blue pen holder. I'm going to have to take off the gloves. It's no good. I tried, I failed. <laughs> the was being nice because people couldn't hear about this awesome potion. <laughs> okay. So which camera are we on at the moment, Ian? You're on overhead at the moment. Okay, so overhead. Hopefully you can see that's our holder. So you have a little push button here that's going to grip the pen. Okay. And at the bottom you can also pop in your little burnishing tool. So you go from this and don't try and do it from the top end, which is a mistake that a lot of beginners make because it then drops in and it's a nightmare to get it back out again. It's fiddly, isn't it, Ian? It is. Yeah. You can do it eventually, but it's fiddly. Carol's asked, would you be producing blanks for the spaces next to the one you are using to protect the map from stray foil? You are going to have a cut file, aren't you? Yes. We've, I've created a cut file with all the blanks. Um, in two files, In two it? files. It'll have to be a third as well, because I did the DL oh, one. you've not done the DL yet. Okay. Um, so there'll be a third one. Um, but it's basically cut it out of the card and it will fit nicely into all the, the slots, basically. Um, okay. But yes, that is in process at the moment. Okay, I need to get into this one. Don't know not to it. So, did you take one of the holder? No, but just really quick. Just hold it Okay, so there's the holder again, just for A and to do. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, the glue pen has measurements on the side and these reflect in how we set up the machine. So at the moment it's a nice full pen, but as you go further down, you're going to adjust the setting on the machine accordingly. So we're gonna push the button, load in the pen. Can you do that sideways on? Sorry, can... Sideways on, okay. That makes sense. Cause... There's a little bit of um, plastic on the end of the nib as well, so just take that off gently with your finger. So try and do this so that my hands aren't in the way. You're going to push that button in, load in the pen and as far as it will go, then release the button. And the pen should hold. <laughs> Trace, handy tip if you can't hear me, turn your volume up Tracy. <laughs> Oh dear, did you have all so quiet? <laughs> That's no good. Okay. So, we're going to load that in as a normal holder, so flat bit to the back. Be careful, like it's got two flat bits. Yeah. So you want metal facing outwards. Yeah, so the metal button should be facing forward. Um, I will try and take a photograph of it in situ later as well. Mm. Yeah. So, with that in place. We also want to do a background scan as well, so I'm going to go OK. So you can make sure that that's in the right place because we're probably going to need to move it over. Ian's going to catch. <sighs> I'm going to save the little bag that the holder comes in just because those two little burnishing bits are so small that I don't want to lose them. Okay. So we're going to have to move that across just a titch. I'm going to go OK so that we know our positioning is where it needs to be. Okay again. Okay. Now we're going to go to please select and we are going to go down to foil glue. 
Oh. Okay. So this is a brand new pen, so we're going to pop our number back up to one and go OK. And it's automatically set the pressure at minus five. It's going to take nine minutes to draw. You didn't fill it, did you? Well, actually, 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 it's probably automatically done it. Just because I'm aware of the time and that it's got to dry. I'll turn the fill off. There we go. No, it doesn't need it, to be honest, that design. At that scale. Just because otherwise it would then do the lines across and it's going to take longer to draw but it's also going to take longer to dry which is something you need to consider. So if you're filling you definitely want to use a foil quill. We're going to go and start that off. to quit just because I can't see any glue going down on that and that's not looking promising. So let's give it a scribble. You want to just use some scrap paper. It's come out all right. Okay. Just the pressure. Let's see how that goes when Let's try again, see if it behaves. Now that I've given it a little squiggle. If it doesn't do it this time, then I'll put the pressure on. pressure up a bit so when we're in our settings here we can go to setting and we can put our glue pressure up now because my pressure is playing up at the moment I'm not entirely surprised so I'm just going to put that up a little bit because pressure is oh that's a shame and Carol likes the roof. Carol likes the roof. Oh, the roof from yesterday. Mm. Yeah, I have to say, we do really love the grey. <laughs> no. no, still no good. I can see. That's, the That's because it isn't even touching. Let's quit that. Let's see what's going on with this pen holder because something is not right. Is it not in there? 
there. Needed to twist it. That's better. There you go. Give it a little twist. Doesn't tell you that one, does it? No. But it's... I know. I thought it was a, like a little diagram. No. Uh, there we go. So in which case then, just in case, I'll adjust my pressure back first. So if ever you do something like that and you've adjusted your pressure, change it back to how it would normally uh, be set. Can we see it, please? Can you see anything? Uh... Yeah, that's drawing now. Hey! Hallelujah! See, so I go wrong so you don't have to. <laughs> Maybe another shelf. why I say don't fill it when it's something that is the lines are that close together because if you do you're going to actually flood your design which is not what you want to do uh, what they said is the drying time just until it goes clear they haven't actually specified the no because it, it will vary by things like the fill like the pressure that you've used, the amount of glue that you're transferring, how old the pen is. The heat of the room. Yep. It will all make a difference. Humidity. Take the centre out of a cookie loop and put it back in your old rubber holder as well. So that you still have that same reference. I don't know, because there should be one in there, but. Okay, so when you've finished doing your drawing, you're going to have to be patient and let it dry. Uh, 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 is it a special glue? No. It's no. literally quickie glue pen glue. It's exactly the same stuff. So it's, it has more in common with um, the like um, zig two way glue that you would retack your mats with basically. As soon as Ian finds a quick glue pen that I can show on the screen. It's not in your tub. There's my one hiding in there. Is it? Where are they all gone? They've vanished. 
Uh, look in the clear pen top over there, sweetie. I think we've got one in here. Because this tends to be my drawing one. Nope, not one in there. That's made in Honda now. <laughs> Every gel pen, but so you want to let this dry completely clear before you put your fault anywhere near it. Otherwise, what you can find it. See how you've got some little white spots just here. If we were to put the foil over at this moment, that's actually going to pull back off onto the foil rather than making the foil release from its plastic sheet, which means you're going to end up with like a little crater in your artwork. So you really want to make sure this is absolutely clear before you put that foil over the top. There's got to be one up there somewhere. Yeah, so you really want to go careful with your glue that it's not being misleading. So even when it gets to sort of the stage where it looks like it's clear, try and give it a little bit longer because the more time you give it, the more tacky it's going to get. Yeah. It's not one for for the impatient like me. It's not one for um, those that are doing bulk crafting. So if you're doing things like wedding invites, the last thing you're going to want to do is go, right, okay, I've got to stop for a bit and I can't move it out of my machine. So while I'm waiting for that to set, I'm going to start removing my protective sheet from its bag. So this is like a, a translucent blue sheet and it's just basically there to stop the foil transferring to your machine. It's thin enough that you can still use it with your foil shield because with the foil shield we were purposely under thickness with it. So I think you can still use that if you want to. So your foil is going to go between this sheet and on top of our design. Then you're going to let it just do its thing. And you are going to want to tape it down a little. So, do we think we're brave enough to try it yet? I think that's starting to look good. So I'm getting right down level with it, checking that it's got an even amount of shine because if there's any bits that aren't quite as shiny, that can indicate that they aren't ready just yet, even though they look clear. Huh? Keep filling. Jeez. <laughs> so, I think I'm going to try it at that and we'll see how we go. I'm going to use some of my white foil. You can use the foil that's in the pack. You can use some foil out of the foil adhesive kit that you can get from the works, for instance. It doesn't have to be expensive foil. I'm going to use a little tape. But you don't need as much as when you're doing your foil quilt because it's not going to be pulling directly on it, it's going to be pulling on the protective mat instead. I'm just going to catch that edge and pull. Like so. Ah, there's a girl. I shouldn't be cheeky, should I? No, 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 I shouldn't be cheeky. 
So I'm going to just line up my protective sheet with my foil shield. And let's grab a little extra masking tape. Do do do. And I'm going to split that down in half because it's a little bit thick for what I want. Oh, that is always going to be one, isn't that? My masking tape is going to be annoying today. So, let's go for that there. Just going to pop my hand underneath so I can press my tape down. And I'm going to come up to this top edge. Now, you want to get your tape underneath, up the other side, so that I can press that down well so it's not going to catch. And that's the important bit we don't want our tape to catch in our machine. Now we're going to attach our tip into our pen holder, like so. And just make sure that that's. It would help if they keyed that too, wouldn't it? Mm. There we go. So there we go. In as far as it will go. And again, load that back in and latch it down. We can now go OK. And we're going to go to foil 2. Now on a CM this is going to be your foil option rather than the glue option. So I've slotted that in. Put the foil on top, put the cover on top, and we can go OK. And it's going to go all the way across that design. Well, I know if it does it like that and doesn't just follow the design because that would be more than enough. So we'll go and start. <laughs> doing that, do you want to just move the camera in? We finally have a quick glue pen. So to compare the two, you just take the caps off. Now this bit is just the protective end that stops the glue from coming out in transit, but you can see that this bit here is identical. So it's really not going to make any difference to your holder at all. There you go. You're going to unload your mat this time? Yes, so now I can unload my mat. Now. So how's that for focus now? Oh, it's a bit fuzzy. Do you want to? Right. It looks fuzzy. Or is that just me? No, because it's got the blue on it. It's the blue. Okay. I'm going to take the tape off carefully. Set that aside for something else later because it's still got plenty of stick in it. We're going to take off our protective sheet. 
and you can put that back into the bag which it came out of. Now for our foil. It doesn't done bad. It takes a it takes a lot longer, but it hasn't done bad. So what I will do is I can save my foil and I can apply that to some double sided adhesive later onto another surface. Hi Nikki. And there is our first owl. What about the quickie in Carl's 3D holder but do the same process? Would you think that? Yep, that will work just as much. So, just because I want to get this out without moving too much of my frame, I'm just going to pop my finger underneath. There we go. Don't want to move it too much so that I can do the next one without having to do too much of a rejig on my design so there you go so this is a matte foil so it's not going to be shiny shiny but it does look stunning on dark card so it will also act as a resist next card so this tongue so that one took you the best part of 35 minutes yeah <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start my foil coil heating up before I go any further, just so it's got plenty of time to get nice and warm. And because our design's already in, we shouldn't need to do too much beyond the background scan. Technically, you shouldn't need to do that because it should be in the same place. Well, yeah, yeah. It'll, it'll only be very slightly out if it's out at all. But and Tracy says I was expecting to see lines. You, you can see it on the foil, you can see the lines where it's gone across. So it's got like a, a sort of banding to it. Mm. But on the actual design, you can't you can't tell at all. Whether that would change with something shiny, where you might get a slight impression. Maybe. So I'm going to take out my little burnished tool. I'm going to load in my mat. So you reckon don't bother with with background scans at the end? I don't know, surely the point of the foil shield is that you wouldn't need to do a background scan, it should be in the right place to go. Yeah. If you want to do one on precaution, you can do one, I'll let you. That's okay. We'll see how it goes. So I'm going to put my foil on there. Now I'm going to do my tape, top and bottom. So this has got quite a big area to actually take this down to. So I didn't need to trim my foil too much smaller. There we go. Just run a bit off on that corner. Just lift it up. And just press it back down. Excuse me. So same on this end. If it curls up a little bit at the end, just lift it up and place it back down. Do sides as well. I was going to do sides. Yeah. Make use of this tape here. Thank you, please. Okay. So maybe just look at that one. So the purpose of the tape is twofold. One, it stops your foil getting caught up in the machine, but it's also there to provide tension. So when we're applying our tape, we want to make sure that our foil is nice and taut. You don't want wrinkles or creases if you can help it, because otherwise. When your foil coil goes across a surface, it's going to skip a line, and we don't want that. So this is all being done with our foil, just in the interest of it being unbiased. Ah, 
Spannend. Fokken? Fokken. Nice and hot, okay. Okay. So with, a, with the standard holder, you're going to make sure this flat bit goes to the back. And it can be a little bit fiddly to get in there, particularly on the SDX models compared to the CM. So just be gentle with it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So usually what I do is I have a little cable tidy. So I've got one over here that you get with the foil quill um, accessory pack from Carl. And you can feed your USB through that so that it keeps your cable out of the way and nice and safe. So this time we're just going to go to draw. Pressure wise, because I'm using the standard tip, the middle one, I'm going to take it down to minus four. Whereas if I'm using the bold, I'll go to minus two, which puts a little bit more pressure through. Or if you're using the fine one, you're going to go down to minus six, just because it is that fine and it does like to catch your foil. So you will definitely need all four size tapes if you are using the fine tip. We're going to go OK. And your draw speed is one, so it has plenty of time to heat up that foil. Make sure your foil is shiny side up, particularly on the white one, because it's the same colour both sides. <laughs> and we'll go start. Andrew, do you have to change fill this time? No, because we haven't changed the file. We haven't changed what it's doing. We've just asked it to do another version of it. Draw, so it should be. Shall I drop it down again so it's... I've got that the right way, haven't I? I'm doubting myself today. You put it up the other way, stop it catching on the bit then. So Carl's little cable tidies do come in handy because I've got one holding my extension lead as well so that it heats it to the front so it's really easy for, to, for me to change USBs. On the, like the tip of the tail and bits down here. Like down this edge, like yeah, he does miss little bits. That's just me being picky. Yeah. <laughs> That's why she lets me judge the competitions. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, in terms of the other things that you can use your glue pens for, um, particularly if you don't want to go to the hassle of foiling with the, the second nib in the um, brother kit, you can also use it for things like leafing, you can use it for embossing powder, you can use it for glitter, particularly the finer micro glitters, you could use it for flocking you 
it's not quite strong enough for using things like your flower soft though so it is it tends to be the lighter things so if it's light and fluffy then you can get this stick to it so things like your snow for instance I think you get better detail this way don't you? yeah you're more Edge, so it, gives you that nice... it, it gives you an even edge, doesn't it? Yeah. And usually you only have to do it once. Once you get your settings right and everything. Yeah. Um, Foil coil gives back what you put into it. So if you, when you first get it, practice and compare lots of settings. So you could do like um, a row of squares starting with the different pressures so that you could see how much of an effect it has on that particular nib and then also fill line widths as well. Uh, can you hand draw with the glue pen or do you have to use the machine? No, you can hand draw. So same way as you can hand draw with a quickie glue pen, you can do it with the rubber pen if you want to. Depends I gave it a little squiggle. So it just that's now ready for foil if I really want to. I'll see when it's that sort of pale blue when it's coming out, it's easier to draw with than <laughs> You could also do the same with your um, zig two way as well. If you have like a squeeze and roll, you can do that by hand. What? You're right. Try not to do it through your nose. <laughs> That's not good. It's not healthy for you. Do you want to hold that for me for a minute? <laughs> Poor arm was going. <laughs> I'll just unclip that out of the machine because you don't want to leave it in the machine while it's still warm. Go OK and we can unload the mat. Give me two seconds, I'll remove the camera again. running out of room in that top section. Mm. So now we can peel off a foil. So it's a lot quicker. Uh, Deb's uh, that's right Corinne you're fine. Um, I guess the wheel my Ricky phone has to have heat activated foil. Yes. Um, but the brother one can use any. Yeah. Yeah. The anything that is adhesive will pull off any kind of foil. So whether that's um, using quickie glue pen, if you're using double sided tape or adhesive, if you are using leafing adhesive, um, that will lift your foils too. Then you've got those that are going to be activated by heat. So anything that has acrylic in it, you can use to lamin laminate and foil. So if you've got your gel medium from Lynette, you can use that, and we have done. If you've got um, texture gel, um, so things like the pretty out there if you're going pretty gets gritty, or if you go to some of the other um, mixed media things, if it's got acrylic in it, even 
acrylic paint you can use to mm -hmm. foil with. Tracy says it looks different shades of white. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold them up so you can see the difference. And it's actually an optical illusion. It's because the lines are almost thicker on the rubber one. Take that out your way from yes, please. So and let's get this so you can see a little bit closer. So while it's far away, it's going to look like that white is slightly more translucent. But when you get up close, you can see what's actually going on. So you can see that you've got much thicker lines on your brother one, whereas you've got much more precise lines on your quill. So if you were to do the same design with your bold tip from your quill, it's going to look different again. And things like this are going to start filling a bit more, a bit like it has done around here. So if you look particularly around the eyes, it's where you can really see the difference. And where the lines have actually filled in and joined up to each other. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So if you just look at those bits there, you can see it's filled in. But if you look around the outside, and it's probably a bit more noticeable just here on the wing, you can see that the quill gives this lovely precise curve, whereas the brother one is a bit wibbly wobbly. So it's going to give you a different effect that way too. So hopefully that's giving you a bit of an idea which you might prefer to go for. Uh, Darcy says, which tip would you start off with please? Probably the medium. The, the um, No, for the quill? Yeah. Start with the bold. Start big and work your way down. Yeah. Yeah. The bold tip is the easiest to use. It's the most forgiving. So start off with the bold tip and a fairly open design. Then work your way so that you're getting a bit more complicated with it. Then when you're confident with setting that up and using it and expect knowing what it's going to do, then start with your standard tip and again start from the basic open design and work your way down. Then start with your fine tip. Now your fine tip is quite sharp by comparison. So whereas your, your bold tip has have you got the, the bold and the fine there in? Just so I can show. Unfortunately, it doesn't come with a pouch. <laughs> uh, and just says, do you have? Have you got time to do the way with Carl's car holder? Yeah, we can show that too. So the bold tip has this sort of really rounded, smooth edge. So you can see that's going to glide nicely on the foil. Whereas your fine one is really needle fine. So it has a tendency to catch a bit more. So if, um, let's use this bit of foil here. If we stick this to the mat, like so. when it's going along it has a tendency to scratch more and if you do that with it you'll feel it whereas this one will actually glide across the surface a bit more but you just by doing that with your hand you can actually feel that kind of so that's why I say that your pressure needs to go down so I say start at minus six but you may find even at minus six that it might still snag your foil a bit too much and you go a bit lighter with your machine because all machines are different and even things like updates do mess with your pressure. So don't be surprised if at some point after one of the updates you end up just adjusting those settings slightly. And Tracy prefers the first one. The brother one? Mm -hmm. I don't know, I don't like it. I can see where she's coming from in terms of it looks bolder, um, but... You could accomplish the same using the bolt tip on them. Yeah. And have a, a much neater edge. 
yeah, much more precise finish. Whereas this one, it's, it's just, it's a bit uh, uneven. So you've got bits where it is open and other bits where it's not open. And it's just like, just be one or the other. <laughs> Would you be able to use the Wheel Memory Keeper's Quill freehand? Um, for that, you have... You can carefully, I suppose. You can carefully keep your fingers away from the end, but... If, if you feel like giving yourself a little bit of a treat, then there is a handheld version available. It works exactly the same way, stick it in the battery pack and off you go. And I would show you what I was doing with it the other day, but I think I'd be shot, so I can't. <laughs> but basically, I was working with the bold tip and some rose gold foil, and you just literally go straight to your design. What I find is it's easier to work with small bits of foil so that you can get your alignment. Or, if you have a stamp platform, stamp your image once onto the card, then put your foil in on top, stamp it again after you've done all your tape and then you can see where you're going with your foil quill you want to use something that is a permanent ink so something like memento stays on that is actually going to settle on that surface because it's like stamping on acetate and if you've ever tried to do that by hand you'll know what that's like but yes it's a, a funky little one so you've got again the fine the standard the bold and there's also a calligraphy tip as well, which is just for the freehand tools. And nice long cables again. And Linda says she prefers the real number keep this one because a more precise image she thinks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she says she needs a mix of the two. <laughs> <laughs> So, to try and use the... I don't know if you've got time, because it's like 3 minutes to 12. 3 minutes to 12, very quickly. Um, let's go for the quickie glue pen. I'm just going to go for something quick on my bit of card. Load my mat. I'm not going to go for anything particularly fussy. So let's go home to reset. And because I want something that's just going to be quick to draw, I'm just going to go into the drawing settings and. Let's go for one that's fetch. So we'll go for the first one. It's going to need to be a little bit smaller than that because I'm going to be working with this bit of card here. I'm going to pop that up to the one inch mark. And I'm just using an off cut of some smooth card so it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Which ones? The handheld the hand ones. Held. That's £35? Um, if you are <coughs> lucky, you may catch them at a reduced price because, as far as I'm aware, they have been discontinued. Oh. Because a lot of the shops have sold them off. Mm. So, I've popped in my glue pen into my 3D thumb prints holder. I'm going to set that on there for a moment. Now I've got four squares across, three squares down and one square in like so. So I'm just going to resize that down just a little bit more. Let's go there. Maybe a little bit. No, that should be okay. I'm going to go OK. I 
and we're still going to use that same foil glue setting even though we're using the different holder. The scale on the glue pen is still one because it's a brand new pen and we can get OK and start. Now it's going to say attach appropriate holder that's just because it's the 3D fun print one so just time to go again. I didn't squiggle, did I? No, it's not drawing, is it? Now you start that again. It's probably me, I've probably forgotten to take the end off. Let's give it a little squiggle over here. There we go. Sometimes I just need a little help getting started. So, two lines to the back. Back in, come on. No, that's okay. No. Is it still not wanting to do it? No, I'm not trying to press it. Let me just check my pens in far enough. So if ever you get a pen that is misbehaving, first of all check your guide that it is actually... It should be fine, because it's... Where it should be. Where it should be. It's blobbing glue, which is always a good sign. So pop that in there. So now we can go in here, settings, and we can alter our glue mat adjustment and maybe put the pressure up just a little bit. Okay. That's better. If you put your head right down level, you should see the light from the back of the machine glinting on it. I'll just use the spots left of the red. So that you can see it on the white. Because you're not going to see white on white unless I've ordered the over the top. some of the colour out my <laughs> pen holder. <laughs> oh dear. Time when you know that you need to clean your pen holder. So it's just pulled a little bit out from the guide. So when we fall over the top it shouldn't really make any difference but that's it isn't it? You can take it off the mat can't you because you don't need yeah. the machine to do the next bit. Because we're not going to bother doing the burnishing no point. We can move that onto our desk. Now white on white is going to be a little harder to see when it's done. But I'm going to just go for it I think. I'm just going to smooth over the top of my finger and there may be a patch missing here. But... Yeah, the advantage is when doing that you can just take another bit can't you and go back over the top. And... Yeah, that's all the advantage of working with adhesive rather than the heat. You can just literally just go back over any bits that you miss.
Could have done with just a little bit more glue going down, but as you put pressure on it, you're going to find it's going to pull more off. Could you use the embossing tool to press down with a little brayer help? <laughs> <laughs> um, a brayer can help, or a um, like the squeegee that I use with the vinyl. Something that's got a, a long flat edge tends to be better than the brayer. <laughs> this is not the way I recommend that you use your membership card, honest. <laughs> <laughs> so what it's actually doing is it's getting all the nooks and crannies from where it's actually drawn onto the paper. Yeah. Bone folder. Bone folder not so much. Um, you want something that's got a bit of an edge to it. I don't think that's bad. It's, there's a couple of bits where it's skipped actually drawing on the paper so by comparison does the does the burnishing help maybe it does the other thing that you can do is you can actually run it through your die cut machine so if you have your embossing mat to hand and want to run it through that way Maybe if the glue dries a little bit more first as well. Yeah. Quite quick to put in. Yeah, I was trying to rush. <laughs> but there you go. It's one of those ones where it could have done, done with going a little bit slower, I think. Mm. It tries to rush a bit too much on that setting and it's something I've noticed with when we've done like the paint pens as well it has a tendency to make the paint pens go yeah. yes because I put it up the wrong way because I'm doing it that's right that one's not used in the moment ah there you go and expired you gave me the old one <laughs> I did give you the old one <laughs> I mean it can be done without all the expense yeah there's lot there's lots of ways that you can fall with your machine without having to spend a lot of money. Yeah, I mean the brother kit you don't actually need because everything it supplies you can get we use different ways, can't you? Yeah. Um also if you know you want to use things like your double sided adhesive to foil with if you don't want to use the glue pens for instance. If like me you're an impatient <laughs> <laughs> you can just cut out your double sided adhesive and lift the backing off it and foil it straight away without having to wait for it to go transparent and all the rest of it. Just off you go. I've had to die. iPad has died, has it? No, it hasn't got Facebook on it anymore, so what's its excuse now? Streamlabs. Oh. oh dear. If anybody has any solutions out there for a poorly iPad that is yeah, using battery like it's going out of fashion. It's going to go out the window. Yeah. It's only since the one update, isn't it? I don't know what they've managed to do to Streamlabs, but it is not a happy bunny. So... With that, I will wish you have a great weekend and we will be back Monday with... What are we doing Monday? I don't know. I don't think we've decided yet. I thought there was something I said I was doing Monday. It'll be a surprise. Yeah, it'll come to me and I'll pop it up in the schedule. As things do. <laughs> Thank you.
Trisha, some of that seems to be dying on me too lately. Yeah, and mums. So I don't know if it's just an apple thing to make you get a new one. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's alright. Oh, excuse me. So take care and. Okay, I was off to do another run to the tip. <laughs> oh, um, next week. We are doing two streams on Wednesday. Wednesdays we have a two o'clock stream as well. Yes, we have two o'clock stream Wednesday, which will be on the Memories Paper Art Group. I have to yes. remember that. Memories Paper Art Group. So if you're not part of that group, then do I might try and do join in. Um, I know Louise, you've been invited. I noticed on the on the guest list. <laughs> but if you're not in that group, then it's going to be kind of scrapbooking and mini album focused. And will the scanning cut get a look in? Probably, because <laughs> you know it's bound to. Remind you, yeah. We'll try and remind you, Louise. Take care and.